Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope y'all having a wonderful day today. We're gonna be checking out this video here. Uh, it is labeled Alabama Kalen D. Whatever on hot seat and could be fired. Context here: I grew up a huge Alabama fan. Huge, huge, huge. Uh, still am a big fan of Alabama. But, but, I do not like college football any longer. I decided a few years back that pretty much last year was the last year that I was going to pay it any mind. Like, is my camera off a little bit? It is a little bit. Uh... Pretty much where I wasn't going to pay it. Like, I'm going to watch, like, the highlights, whatnot, stuff like that. But beyond that, I don't I don't really care. Because that NIL stuff, uh, there's two NFLs now. And it's funny as hell that only one and a half seasons people were seeing that. Uh, I even think that's what happened with... With Coach Saban, like, I believe he pretty much figured that was coming too, and he set a date for it, and Miss Terry was like, this the time you got to go? Uh, but this guy here, I ran across, actually, another video that I watched that had him in it. Like, the person was, uh, watching his video. So I went to look for this guy himself to check out his channel. It's cool. I like it. Uh, he's going to be talking about this. Let's see what his thoughts is on it, though. Because uh, he seems to know sports pretty well. Already? Kalen DeBoer's on the hot seat already? Keep above my head if you wouldn't mind, y'all. Halfway through year one? Huh. And that's probably true. I wonder who could have seen this coming. Back oh. in January, <laughs> okay. I was a guest with Charlie Arnold okay. on OutKick, and since I'm from down here on the Gulf Coast, she asked what I thought about Alabama hiring Kalen DeBoer. Now, to be perfectly honest... Uh, I had no idea who this guy was, personally, myself. But I did look, look him up and everything after. Because I didn't even know he was on, like, the short list of becoming the coach over there. And, yeah, when I seen it, I was like, well, he's got a good, you know, win ratio, you know, all this want, 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 pretty, beautiful, won steps. Then I watched his team play, and it was all like this high fly, West Coast offense, BS, that just, I shouldn't call it BS, but it just doesn't work here. Our team isn't built for that. That's the reason Milrow is sucking. That little cat named Williams, that wide receiver, that is the absolute best player on Alabama's offense. I don't care what anybody says. I've been watching that cat since he was in high school. He's better than everybody else. And they ain't even using him. They overworking Milrow, which is going to end up fucking his NFL career. Uh... Kalen, Coach Kalen, you acting like Steve Spurrier. You need to, you need to seriously stop that before you seriously get Milrow messed up where he can't have a career. But yeah, he's definitely like, I agree with this hot seat thing that he's talking about because Bandy. One hundred percent. If he loses to Auburn, he's fired. If he could somehow pull out Auburn and beat Tennessee, he might get another year. Might. I'm gonna go on prediction right now too, y'all. Y'all ready? We may end up with Lane Kiffin again. 
hiring Kalen DeBoer. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I didn't know very much about him before he was hired by Alabama. However, I am very familiar, very familiar with the Alabama program and more specifically the Alabama fan base. <laughs> I started my response to Charlie by saying our, I felt bad for our Caleb standards are too high. You never want to be the guy who replaces the legend. You want to be the guy that comes after the doofus who replaces the legend. Now, obviously, <laughs> that's true. As a head coach in college football, you never turn down the opportunity to coach at Alabama. Mm -hmm. That's like turning down the Yankees or turning down the Cowboys, the Lakers. You just don't do it. Fact. The second part of my response, I told Charlie Arnold that Kalen DeBoer was on a very short leash. Ten wins? That ain't going to be enough. It is competing for the national no. championship or your ass is on the hot seat. Now, Charlie. I'll add this. Because uh, I, I, I do... I. I I held I held them to that standard too, because if you play just basic hat on a hat, keep your head in the game. That's just everything will work out. I held them to a very high standard also, but if you can beat Auburn and get into the SEC championship, and every three four years or something like that actually pinning into the national you probably can keep your job no one's going to expect another Nick Saban I mean he went on a like a truly lifetime historical run she was a little bit surprised by my response, which that's completely understandable. If you are not familiar with the Alabama fan base, the expectations we are of the first year coach, they can seem outright ludicrous. It's one of those things, and I'll borrow some lyrics from the Eminem classic 8 Mile. One of those things that you have to live it to feel it if you didn't. I'm just testing my mic. Uh, hold up. Y'all skip forward for about 10 seconds here. Trying to get my mic check. Okay, mic check, mic check. All right, yeah. Right. You just wouldn't Welcome back, y'all. Mark my words. Kalen DeBoer has no job security. Halfway through the season, sitting at 5-1 and one with your one loss coming to Vanderbilt and barely beating South Carolina last week. <laughs> I love you, Vandy. Uh, if you're a member of the DeBoer family, I would not get too comfortable living in Tuscaloosa. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTLA4. If you happen to stumble across this video, be sure to check out my main channel, Behind the Line. Search Behind the Line here on YouTube. Should be the first channel that comes up. Y'all check them out. One of the reasons I said Kalen DeBoer doesn't want to be the guy who replaces Nick Saban, it's because of exactly what has been happening to him throughout the season. As long as you're winning and you're beating teams like South Carolina in convincing fashion, yeah, it's not enough just to win. You, you gotta dominate. By. But as long as you're winning, as long as you're meeting Yeah, we'll take the we'll take the win. Enter a mile. But we do expect something like South Carolina. It was, yeah, South Carolina should be a 30-point win. Bandy should have been about a 30-point win. Uh, I love you, Bandy. I ain't mad at y'all about beating us. I, I, I'm not at all. I respect, man. Y'all played a hell of a game. I'm just disappointed and we broke our record, all right? I ain't gonna lie. I'm just mad about the numbers. Good game, though, y'all, for real. I seen them highlights. That was... Y'all played y'all's butts off, man. Oh, my gosh. Between y'all and uh, Army, y'all can... Y'all gonna call some ruckus. Expectations. Everything's all good. You can walk on water. Alabama fans, they will worship at your statue on Saturday mornings. But the very first time you fail to meet expectations, the first embarrassing loss the temperature Bandy. on that seat it starts to heat up and your ass begins to boil we are what 
Six weeks into the season. Propane. Six weeks into Kalen DeBoer's first year. Not even and look electric. at what's already happened to him. Alabama fans are complaining about his choice of clothing attire that he wears on the sidelines. Huh? Was he wearing a hoodie? Don't he know he's in the South? St. Nick would never wear that shit. He always wore polos. I could totally hear somebody saying that like that. Like, for real. I haven't heard anybody say that though. Uh, I could, but I could see that. I could see that people. Yeah, Bama fans are petty. Me personally, I don't care. Wear what you want to wear out there, man. You're the you're the head coach. You outside a football game, go have fun. Remember the Georgia game a few weeks ago. <laughs> You know, it didn't help that Nick Saban was sitting on his throne in the press box. Nick Saban sitting on his throne in his rightful place as the Lord and Risen King in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> Their game against Georgia. Alabama builds a big lead early. Nick Saban, he is seen in the press box looking completely pissed off. Yeah. Alabama's up 21, maybe even 28 points. I can't remember. That's but not when enough. Nick Saban is interviewed by ABC That's not enough halftime, against Georgia. he warns that the game is far from over. Saban was not happy with their performance. Georgia ends up coming back. Alabama barely wins the game. But what happens this past weekend? Memes start circulating. Georgia, honestly, I'm sorry about that because we messed up against... Uh, Vandy right after that. Lady on social media showing Kalen DeBoer smiling like Jackie Mahomes in a room full of supersized cucumbers. While Nick Saban is looking pissed off in a game a few years ago where Alabama's leading by 28 points late in the fourth quarter. To mm. put it mildly, Kalen DeBoer, he's not a popular man right now in Alabama. Now, I see some in the media claiming, well, he has plenty of job security. He has an eight-year contract worth almost $90 million. Ninety <laughs> <laughs> uh, <you> <laughs> million is cheap. I'm sorry, yo. I'm sorry. Not for real. Look. <laughs> we give him double that to get the fuck out of here if he's messing. <laughs> All we care about is winning. We don't give a shit what it costs. The SEC is the equal opportunity, meaning every school gets paid evenly so the better every school does everybody benefits so in other words there is a bunch of money in the sec lots of money bama i don't even know how much bama makes but it's it's something stupid they could cover that in a month uh that's <laughs> just funny as hell though for real, uh, like, <sighs> we will buy a mug out. We don't care. We don't care. It don't matter what it costs. It don't matter what it costs. It don't. You could put a B on the end of that, and we'd be like, bet. We, look, we paid, we paid Nick Saban upward of like 15 to 18 mil a year. You think we care about 90 million on by? <laughs> Tract worth almost ninety million dollars. <laughs> uh, you think Alabama cares about money? You Hell think no. they care about contracts? <laughs> Let me tell you what they care about: championships. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean you have to win one every year, but you better damn well be in contention. One more. Loss. Kalen DeBoer loses one more game. He better not. And that ass goes from boiling to outright burning. I am telling you, these people down here, they don't play when it... His only pass 
of losing a second game will be if we get to the if I keep seeing man, I'm so used to being with them still. I still say we I'm still gonna be I'm still a diehard Bama fan. I'm just not in college football no more because man, I could go on a rant to totally explain it, but people that don't know anything about it wants to argue stupid facts that they don't know when those players were already getting paid more money than you make before the NIO. It ruined the sport. I knew it was going to ruin the sport. Playoffs was a freaking horrible idea. I was trying to tell everybody that. You don't want SEC everywhere. Well, don't make playoffs. They thought that was going to stop it. No. You're just going to put more... Do- I'm getting off track. The only one he'll be allowed is the championship game. He cannot lose another regular season game. If he loses another regular season game with who is left, which is Tennessee, like the big games that matter, like Tennessee, LSU, Auburn, he loses one of those, I don't think he'll be back next year. It comes to Alabama football. Think it's a game. But JC, it is a game. (laughs) Yeah, go ahead and think that. Like I said earlier, you have got to live it to feel it. And if you didn't, you wouldn't get it. There is pressure to win at other college football programs. There's pressure to win at LSU, Florida. Pressure to win at Ohio State. There's pressure to win at USC, Oklahoma. There's pressure to win at every major program in the country. But believe me when I say this. I like those gnomes in the back. Nothing compares to Alabama. Now, am I saying that Kalen DeBoer will be fired this season? No, no. I don't think they're going to fire him after one year. But it's not outside the realm of possibility. Uh, Now, we wouldn't get rid of him during during the year. But after the year, yeah. Let Alabama lose to Tennessee this weekend. God forbid they lose to LSU, lose to Auburn. Forget about it. And look, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying these expectations are realistic. Mike Shula was the last one we gave a pass on that Auburn thing. That's never going to happen again. It's damn near impossible to follow in the footsteps of a legendary coach like Nick Saban. Especially when it feels like that legendary coach is still part of the program. He Feels is. like Nick Saban is just waiting in the shadows. I'm not saying the expectations with Kalen DeBoer are logical, but... I want to elaborate on that, y'all. He is still affiliated with the college. Like, he still works there. He's just not the head coach. That's what, uh, that's what he's referring to. It's reality. 12 and 0. That is the expectation every yep. season. 11 and 1, that's okay. That's You'll be fair. forgiven for one loss, but two losses? Three? Not competing for the national championship? Three? No. That dog won't hunt. <laughs> Give me your thoughts on this, though. Is Kalen DeBoer's job in jeopardy already? Is there a scenario where. Alabama fires him at the end of this season. Like I said, I don't think he's going to be fired this year, but at the same time, I would not be surprised if it happened. (laughs) You tell me. Sound off in the comments below. I'll see you guys on the main channel. I will have to say that that should not be on the fucking screen. What the fuck is that? Hold on me. Let me back that up so y'all don't have to be stuck and staring at that damn whatever the fuck that that thing was. Uh... My thoughts on him, brother, is if he does, like what you said, if he ends up pooping this Tennessee game, uh, he might be okay because it's still halfway through the season. But if it prevents them from getting into the playoffs, he's done. Uh, If he loses to Auburn, man, we both know he's done. We know that. You can't lose to Auburn. Especially if you lose to Vandy. That was, that's the same as losing to Tennessee and Auburn in the same year. You can't do that. Uh, Alabama literally fires coaches just because they don't beat Auburn. You can win every other game and, and keep losing to Auburn. 
Yeah. And you're done. You're done. Me, personally, I told my wife, it's about, yeah, I think it was week three. I told her that uh, this coach is done. He's done. This coach is gone. Uh, and it's not even really per se about even what he's going to end up record-wise. He could even go and win this national championship. And he is going to end up being gone because, my opinion, he is not running everything with those guys like the way stuff's meant. If you... Where's the saving? He, he, you don't want to make great football players. The goal is to make great men. Encourage them and show them the path to be great men. That's it. They just happen to be great at football. Becoming a better person makes them just better in life. Life in general. If you don't believe me, seriously, think about the presence, the demeanor, how they are this year alone versus just last year. Too much celebrating, partying around, and looking too much like uh, <clears throat> every Colorado player with their losing games. Must love and respect, I will kick. Wait, 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 wait. I lost the button here. There it is. Hey, y'all, must love and respect. Catch y'all later.